welcome to track one. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you are having a great day with Diana Initiative. So before we get started, I'll just do a couple of quick announcements. I'll invite you to visit our excellent fun villages. There's lock picking down that away. There is the maker and soldering village just off the bridge desk up, up at the front. And I want to say thank you to our sponsors who have helped make this happen, some of whom are Microsoft, Toyota, Verizon, Synac, and they're all out there. They have wonderful tables to go visit, say hi, see them for a few minutes on your way as you're walking up and down the halls to catch talks or do other things in our networking lounge further down, make friends, meet people. And without any further ado, I want to introduce you to Ryan Rattan and Emily Peacock, who are going to be talking to us today about building diverse communities. And I will hand this over now to Ryan. Thank you. Thank you so much, Cheryl. All right. So for all of you here, and for, whoa, hello. <laughs> so for all of you here and for those uh, attending virtually, thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to talk to you about red teaming um, the cybersecurity diversity problem. Now, this is obviously a very big problem, and we have a very small time spot slot, so we're going to do our best to cover some poignant details so you can take away with some actionable items. So uh, with that, to leave time for questions, we're going to get it going. So we're going to do some introductions really quick. So Emily, you want to go ahead and take it away? Yes. Thank you, Ryan. Hi, I'm Emily Peacock. I'm the Red Team's Community Engagement Manager at Synac and the Artemis Red Team Lead. Uh, I myself am not a hacker, but I've spent over five years as a culture ambassador for tech startups and am passionate about bringing people together and making people smile by whatever means necessary. <laughs> okay. And my name is Ryan Rutan. I'm the Senior Director of Community here at Synac, which means I get the honor of running the Synac Red Team. A little bit about myself, I am a lifelong hacker, programmer, um, nerd, geek, uh, community evangelist and author and so for me what that means is I've got to spend my career bringing people together talking about technology advancing it and doing really cool stuff so doing over the last four years in cybersecurity has been a true pleasure for me uh, so why are we here um, the goal here is to try to take actionable offensive steps to try to address um, the diversity problem and this to give you some context wanted to take a little bit of a back step to show you kind of how we kind of became came into this solution or came into this initiative. Um, so we go back to early 20, or to mid 2020, and uh, we saw this report that came out from Cybersecurity Ventures, and it showed that in 2021, that women were projected to have at least 25% of the global, of the roles in the, the global uh, cybersecurity market. And so that was something that really caught our eye, considering that in 2013, this number was at 10%, and just two years prior, it was uh, 20%. So this was, giving us this idea that there was this, for lack of a better term, this wave of women that were coming into cybersecurity. And we were like, this was really exciting for us for a couple of reasons. The big piece was that at the time, we were actually in the process of trying to figure out a way to have a more intentional program for recruiting women into the red team. So when we saw this report, we were like, okay, we're just gonna sit back. We're gonna just let this wave hit us and we're gonna be ready to take it all in. Pandemic continues. Um, we didn't see this wave come in and so we were like well what's going on and so we started doing some research and like maybe the pandemic is causing some external factor that we weren't aware of um, and as we dug in we actually ran into this other report from uh, we ran into this other report from Tessian which talked about the opportunity in cybersecurity and it said that 49 percent of all women that were surveyed felt that the pandemic had a positive impact to their career in cybersecurity which perked my ears a bit because you don't hear pandemic and positive impact in the same sentence very often. And then secondly, it was exactly opposite of what we were thinking. You know, what was this obstacle that we were looking for like a negative and yet we saw a positive. Uh, we were fortunate enough to attend ShmooCon back in March where we attended a Making Space initiative event where there was a panel of women cybersecurity professionals. And having this report in the back pocket, I actually asked them, I was like, hey, you know, here's this report, here's this stat, what is your personal take on this? And they all affirmed to the same that this was true. They felt that um, the pandemic actually did improve their careers and the things that they cited were along the lines of that it got rid of the middleman. It got rid of this notion of being able to hide and ultimately uh, got rid of the office politics and it helped focus everyone on the merit-based achievement which these women excelled in mightily. So we're like, all right, well, we've got this report we, we have these positive things, but again, the question still stood, you know, where are all the women at? 
So this kind of brings us to our Artemis story. Um, you know, so when I talk about the origin for Artemis, what's really important is to realize kind of the envelope that it exists in. So the Synac Red Team is a crowdsourced uh, community of security researchers, right? And it's a very diverse one. Like we recruit the most trusted, the most skilled, the most diverse community out there. And it's predominantly diversity is the mo number one criteria for us because it's the best way that we can provide the best customer value. You know, like our job is to provide the best representation of malicious attackers, no matter where they come from. And as a result of that, we need to make sure that we're hiring a very, or bringing in diverse talent so that we can bring in all those unique perspectives. So as we talked about it, you know, we noticed that we weren't seeing this massive uptake, right? And so we were doing all the different strategies and things of like, we were going and promoting in women's groups. We were doing online CTFs. We were doing the conferences. You know, we were even doing like white glove outreach. And while each of them had a success that was going on, we did not necessarily see this, this uptick. So it started turning the conversation is like, what's wrong with them becoming to what's wrong with us? And so we started looking introspectively and we said, okay, let's go ask people. So we started talking to a bunch of women. We talked to gender minorities and we said, hey, what, what is going on? Like what makes, you know, why aren't you interested in this? What could we do to make it better? And what's interesting in those conversations, they actually led to not only the basis by which we were ultimately, you know, go towards solving our women recruitment problems, but also it would become the foundation for what we would eventually call the Artemis Red Team. And so what we're gonna to share today is kind of like a distillation of all those conversations and themes that hopefully you can take with you to your communities of influence and potentially replicate similar successes with the tools that you might have. So the first thing is community. And this is by far the most important thing that you can invest in. If there's one aspect of trying to bring people together is creating a very strong community. And it's the thing that's gonna pay the most dividends. Um, we have a good community, it's, uh, it's fun, it's supportive, it's quirky, but at the end of the day, it could always be better. And so the first thing that we thought or noticed that was really interesting from the feedback was this notion of having a safe and supportive space um, for, for women um, to be able to ask questions, share ideas, and not have judgment. And ultimately, we found that there was a lot of imposter syndrome, a lot of like, you know, need to be perfect that was kind of preventing people from doing this. And regardless of why it was happening, this was something that we felt was you know, a very important problem to solve. And so from our perspective, we did create a very exclusive channel for the Artemis people to, uh, to collaborate with each other. And it's, it literally is only for Artemis people. I'm actually not even in it. I don't allow myself to be in that channel because I want it to be a holistically pure, safe space. So there's really, it's Artemis and Artemis only. The second piece that we saw was around isolation. Um, so in general, when you talk to researchers, over the, at least in my four years I've been doing in this, doing this space, um, isolation is a problem in general. Um, people don't understand what hackers do. There's this sensationalized thing that people see on the TV and they're like, oh, you must be doing that. Or there's, there's this over, you know, kind of simplified view of what they do, but no one really understands or very few people understand the nuance. And it's one of the reasons why people like coming to conferences like Diana Initiative, Black Hat, DEF CON, you know because they wanna find people that they know and that understand what they do, can appreciate it. But a lot of the isolation uh, that we, conversations we had were partly that, but there was actually a very interesting one for me was the notion that a lot of the women we talked to were the only woman in their organization and in their role. So how can you grow as an employee or as a, a security researcher if you don't have someone that understands your domain is that you can bounce ideas off of that you feel comfortable doing, right? And that's a very isolating experience. So for us, building a community that is around connection and making sure that people realize that there's a way to reach out and a way to find connections with people. And so for us, that's the most important thing that you can do from a community setup perspective is to make it very clear that uh, when you join a community, that make it clear on how you connect with one another. And this is something that Synac Red Team and the Artemis, this is a 365, 24-7 kind of a mission that we have. Can, related with the connection part is how you connect, and this is where the culture comes in, and also where I think diversity plays the biggest role. Um, when you build a culture that is inclusive and is actually about around people connecting to one another, it's redundant and more efficient to have a multifaceted connection layer. You don't want people all connecting over, oh, I studied for OSCP, right? You wanna have people be able to connect on things that are very um, core to their personal being. And so when you have diverse pe people from diverse backgrounds, you have more opportunities for people to connect in different ways and it grows those synapses that connect people in the community. And the one thing I would also argue is that you don't have to focus on professional traits. Like, you know, I would argue someone coming into a community right off the bat, 
they would have just as strong a connection connecting with someone that's into horticulture or cars or the show Firefly, just saying. Um, then if you were to say, oh, let's connect over, we like SQLi or we like RCE or some like custom like, you know, specific type of exploit. Like both are strong connections, but one of them is more innate and is more long lasting. And that diversity gives you more cross sections at that point. The last piece that I would say just to bring up, which is, it's, it's important to, to recognize is that in the women that we interviewed um, for this, uh, in this kind of process, cooperation was much more of a theme than co competition, which means that women were not seeking individual recognition as much as they were seeking, I just wanna be part of something bigger than myself. I wanna work with people that are like me and I wanna find people that I can work with and do great things. Those themes and messages resonated 10 times more than I wanna be the best woman hacker in the world or I wanna be, you know, whatever. So from my perspective, that's something that would be interesting as you set up your communities and you invest time in building this framework for people to come together, connect and grow, making sure that you kind of dial those elements in. Now for the rest of these, I'm actually gonna turn it over to Emily and she'll talk through the rest of the presentation. Thank you. So there's a history of isolation and loneliness working in cybersecurity. We all need a little support and camaraderie at times, especially when your dog is tired of listening to you rant. But having a foundation of mentorship plays a pivotal role in changing these for the better and building a community to foster collaboration. Anyone can be a mentor and anyone can be a mentee because everyone has something to share and there's always more to learn. As a community leader, seek out individuals with different experience and skill or different organizations, teams, and departments to build a diverse community of opportunity. For example, we have programs to recruit up and coming talent for this specific purpose. Once you've identified your mentees and mentors, you'll wanna create opportunities for mentorship to take place. Our mentees receive special access to training by simply partnering with other SRT and learning hands-on. My favorite recent example involves a researcher who is still trying to find her footing. She had been in the community for a few months and was having, but was having trouble difficulty, but was having difficulty finding success against more skilled competition. Upon hosting our first early access target for the group, she was able to collaborate with a more seasoned researcher who assisted her in achieving her first accepted vulnerability, boosting her confidence and motivating her to set her next goal. We can really see collaboration in full effect at our live hacking events. They aren't just pure competition. Different researchers from different locations, all in the same room, verbally interacting as they collaborate with one another, getting excited by another researcher's findings. Even as a bystander, the energy is so refreshing. But what does someone in a mentor role have to gain, you might ask? Mentorship can't just be about philanthropy. It needs to be a win for everyone. To make this work, we offer mentors pay incentives, bonuses, training, and points towards our recognition program. For our SRT, the recognition program is an extra incentive on top of the money that they can earn. The points they accumulate are put towards highly desired swag, but you'll also want to focus on, more, on measurable outcomes for the business and community. Outcomes that benefit the customer, SYNAC, and the researcher are all encapsulated in our point system. The more points researchers get, the more value they know they're adding to the customer. You might ask, but Emily, how do I come up with the right incentives? It is absolutely essential to get to know your community. What is it that motivates them the most? Is it enabling players to tap into activities and opportunities that they truly enjoy or are passionate about? Is it the desire to learn and grow? Or maybe you're fortunate enough to have players that view their work as a call for service, feeling a sense of duty towards the mission. And money is generally a safe bet, but it's often the hardest and most difficult motivator to manage because it's always subjective. With your motivators in place, you want to communicate clear paths of success to your audience, goals to reach. With Artemis, for example, we set up a rewards program with different levels. Each level comes with its own set of ART swag from t-shirts, water bottles, duffel bags, to our highest current level prize, where the researcher is connected with a seamstress who creates a custom design with the researcher and then embroiders that design on the back of a jean jacket equipped with an Artemis patch. Kind of like that. Mm -hmm. 
Repetition, repetition, reputation, and recognition can also function as successful motivators. For instance, outside of our rewards program, program we also have the Synac Acropolis, a website where we spotlight profiles of top performers for the world to see. This provides a connection between the customer and researcher, building a deeper sense of trust. Researchers strive to earn their spot on the site, which showcases a bio of their accomplishments and special skills within cybersecurity. This type of recognition is typically easy for anyone to replicate in any community with limited resources. So now you've got your community, you've, got, you've encouraged mentorship, you've identified what drives your community. The last piece, possibly the most important aspect to maintaining a growing community, is spotlighting role models. Especially role models with different backgrounds and paths of their journey that other members can more easily identify with and say, hey, that person's experiences are similar to mine, and they were able to accomplish this, so I can too. This goes for any group, any organization, any community. Providing creative space to elevate them and give them a voice. These are some of our ART role models. Their stories are wonderful examples of leaders and mentors you can seek out in your own community. So first we have Jada. Jada's been an intern with Synac through her final two years of high school and has already earned her Security Plus certification and is about to embark on her cyber operations journey. Next, we have Battle Angel. Battle Angel is a young and successful researcher in India who loves web testing and is determined to become the world's top women, the top earning women bug hunter. Uh, next, we have Gabrielle, who you may have heard speak earlier today. <laughs> Gabrielle is a Canadian researcher who made a big career leap in, into cybersecurity and is dedicated to educating others on how they can do the same. And now we have Bella, oh, there it is. Now we have Bella, a full-time senior security operations engineer with Synac, but has made a name for herself in the researcher community through her work on Port Sawyer Labs and other learning materials. And both Jada and Bella are here today. And Gabrielle, well, yes, because she spoke, so. <laughs> but feel free to come uh, meet them at our booth if you haven't already. And then we have Jennifer. Jennifer's uh, an Army veteran who specialized in networking and SATCOM during her service and transitioned into pen testing and crowdsourced security after. And last but not least, Busra, one of our Turkish researchers who started her career as a traditional pen tester but has since pivoted to a full-time bug hunter. These are all amazing individuals with diverse backgrounds. Artemis is one of the many ways we are elevating awareness of their accomplishments, but this is something that we can all do. Elevating awareness of role models is the single biggest thing that any one of us can do to support the women around us, or any underrepresented group for that matter. Why? Because no matter your background, it's easier to climb a mountain knowing that you're not the first one. Seeing yourself in someone that has completed the journey you're about to embark on is at least reassuring, if not motivating. Oops. Roles and opportunities for women in cybersecurity are certainly on the rise, but there are a lot of obstacles, lots of things that stand in our way. The best thing we can do to make a difference is to reach out within our communities, elevate the champions, the leaders, and the role models. And in doing that, we'll be able to help fill those roles with highly capable women. I know what you're thinking. Wow. This sounds amazing. How can I get in on this? Just remember, some things that you can do to help today are investing in a diverse and inclusive community culture, creating opportunities for mentorship, recognizing achievements of all shapes and sizes, and promoting role models to inspire future generations. And that concludes our presentation. Thank you so much for listening. Also, take any questions if you have them. Is anybody else like sweaty and nervous? Oh, hey. <laughs> what are the best ways to get your company behind the initiative to start something like this? Because I'm just one person, I'm the only woman on my team. Um, so it's hard to, you know, have a voice in that sense, so any advice? I think one thing that I've learned is that numbers speak volumes. So if you can, numbers and, and like facts, and if you can find information on, on how this has uh, benefited companies, I think that that would be something really great to, to bring to 
whoever it is that makes the decisions. Do you have anything to add, Ryan? So yeah, uh, I, would, I would kind of piggyback on what Emily just said. The best thing you could do, especially if you're starting from a deficiency in numbers, is find an executive sponsor and find a way to actually and make, the, make the pitch. Say, hey, I need to, my goal is, it's not to necessarily uh, bring in women or whatever. My goal is to provide more diversity in uh, coverage or skill or whatever. And the tactic to do that is to bring in more women because there's obviously not that many, if not any here. And so that's a, a point that you can then use that narrative to point to the research that shows, you know, this is what, you, you know, the, what is needed to kind of make the composition of, of whatever group you're trying to build out um, more important. And then the biggest thing is to start small, finding ways to bring in women mentors, uh, women speakers, uh, educators like that, and then work with HR. If it's an internal position, work with them to prioritize, um, you know, promoting that as, as, a, as a, not a requirement, but as a, as an ideal. It's like, look, we're trying to bring in uh, diversity and, and if you can get it, get a couple of people in and you just keep that story narrative, you just keep increasing the ask every time. Look, see, we brought people in. This is what, you know, how do you want to measure success? This is the part that um, Emily was talking about, which is creating goals and making sure that, hey, I said that I would increase X by this, and look, we, we hired two people, and we did. Let's hire two more, and, let's, and, it's, and it's work your way up. And then once you get critical mass, then you can start doing bigger swaths and bigger hits at it. But it definitely has to start with someone who holds the purse strings who can advocate at the leadership level for sure. We'll also be here tomorrow, so if questions pop up, you can always come find us at our booth. And we have candy at our desk, so. <laughs> and really cool swag. Yeah, and cool swag. So. And really cool people. Yes. So thank you, everybody, for attending. Thank you, truly. Thank you.